The entered operating system has been around for over a decade, and aside from making me feel old, it's also getting tough to remember all the useful features buried inside the settings or native Google apps. So in this video, I'll remind you of a few hidden features that you may have forgotten about or could be learning about for the first time. First off, if you have an app that doesn't support a dark theme, there's a possibility of forcing it to have one anyway. For example, I managed to darken PayPal, Google Opinion Rewards, and the Starbucks app by just toggling a single option. So in the settings app, you just hop into about phone, tap the build number seven times, put in your passcode, and it'll enable the developer options. Go back, jump into the system, advanced, developer options, and scroll down until you see a toggle titled override for start. Enable that, and now some of your apps that didn't have a dark theme before will have one. Whenever you're in split screen mode, you can quickly highlight any text from an app and drag it into the text field of any other app. It's much faster than trying to manually copy and paste between your opened apps. Within your phone app, you can quickly dial your most recent call by just tapping on the dial button when you have the dialer open but empty before you start actually entering a number, save you a few taps. On many phones, you can also end a call by just pressing the power key so you don't have to tap around or even look at your phone when you're done talking with the person. To enable this on some phones, just jump into the accessibility section of the settings app and tap on power button and call, though it could be in a different spot for you. Also, did you know that most devices have mobile data constantly running even when you're connected to a Wi-Fi network? This does help to switch from Wi-Fi to cellular data more quickly, but it also makes a dent in the battery life. So if you're experiencing heavy battery drain due to your phone being old or just want to make every last percentage point count, then you can turn the setting off in the developer options. It's called mobile data always active. An underrated feature that most of you probably don't use but should is app shortcuts. Most of us have our most used apps on your home screen and I'm sure for most of those apps, you just visit the same screen or conversation or launch the same action every time you open them. To make things faster, you can just replace it with an app shortcut that will take you directly to that same screen, saving you a few extra taps. For example, usually when I open Spotify, I jump to the like songs page to shuffle and play my music but now I use an app shortcut from Spotify that lets me jump directly to that page. It's pretty handy. Finding out whether an app has a shortcut you might use is pretty easy too. Just long press on the icon to see what your options are and then drag one of them onto the home screen. Simple as that. Another feature that will save you a few extra taps is that you can quickly bring down the quick settings panel by just swiping down the status bar with two fingers instead of one. Not all phones are launcher supported, but many do and it's easy to check. If you have a flash drive or external hard drive, you can connect it to your phone and explore or transfer the files that are on it. On many phones, you can just plug it in, a notification will pop up, and then you tap on explore to see all the files within that USB drive. You can delete, transfer, copy, or share any of the files within that drive or move your phone's files onto the external drive. But the phone doesn't stop there. If your phone's touchscreen has stopped working, you can also plug in a USB mouse and control your phone with a cursor. It works just like a laptop. Androids also support Xbox controllers, ethernet adapters, the list goes on and on. All you really need is a USB Type-C adapter and you should be good to go, though this doesn't work on some phones that don't support USB OTG. If you use Google Chrome as your main browser, there's an extremely easy way to switch between your open tabs. Just swipe left or right on the address bar and it'll quickly switch over to the next tab. You can also long press on the tab button to bring up a menu that lets you close the current tab, open a new one, or jump into incognito mode. And if you long press on the three dot menu, you can then slide down your finger to your preferred option without even lifting your finger. Lastly, if you want to turn a web page or online article into a PDF file, all you need to do is tap on the three dot menu, tap on share, then print, and then where it says select a printer, select save as PDF, and tap on the PDF button to save it. Moving on to the Google Maps, one of the first things that I like to do when I get a new phone is to download a section of my maps for offline use. To do this, I just tap on my Google account icon, select offline maps, tap on select your own map, and then I move the rectangle over the area that I like to download. Once I tap on the download button, that area will be made available for when I'm offline. Trust me, this essay might have so many times when I'm on the road with a spotty connection. Gboard is pretty much the most popular Android keyboard out there and there are a few tricks hidden within it. For example, when sending a message, we all know that we can also send a mashup sticker of two emojis combined. 
but some of the combinations are honestly really funny. For example, the two cowboy emojis will make a cowboy man, two blank faces will make a literal blank face, you can also have the hmm face. Using two mask emojis creates a sticker with two masks. You also have a Pinocchio sticker and the smirk face. And finally, the world is crashing down face. There's a ton more of where that came from. One of the Andrew Police writers, Rita, put together a list of 160 awesome emoji combos that you can try out. I'll link it down below. Oh, and for those who don't know, you can also make the keyboard easier to use with one hand by just long pressing on the enter key and then sliding up. It'll minimize it and you can have it switch sides by tapping on the arrow. Whenever you hand your phone over to someone else, like a friend or a child or a stranger asking if they could use your phone to do something, like make a phone call, you can pin the app so that they can't leave it and snoop around on your phone. To set it up, search for app pinning in the settings and enable it. From there, jump into the recent menu, tap on the app icon and then select pin. Now you won't be able to see or access your notifications and you can't leave the app until it's unpinned. To unpin it, you just swipe up and hold and then it'll bring you to the lock screen where you'll need to enter your passcode. Probably one of the smartest things that you can do is add a message to your lock screen that has a friend or relative's phone number on it just in case you lose your phone. So that way, if anyone finds it, hopefully they'll try to give it back to you. On most devices, just open the settings, navigate to display, lock screen, and select add text on lock screen. Just be sure to put someone else's phone number there. It's no use if that number just points to the same phone number that's been lost. If you're an Android expert or you follow the news, you may already know this, but for those who aren't aware, just last year, the Android platform received a new feature called Nearby Share, which works like Apple's AirDrop feature. You can easily send a file over the air to another device without having to mess with Bluetooth, NFC, or any third-party app. And the best part is that it works on devices running Android 6.0 and later. The setting to enable it may vary between devices, but it should appear in the settings, Google, device connections, and then nearby share. From there, you can fire it up within the quick settings panel or the share menu. And once both devices are visible to one another, you can start sharing. Finally, if you're using an app like Shazam to discover songs you hear in person, you no longer need it. Just ask the Google Assistant what's this song and it'll tell you. You can also add a Google Assistant widget named Sound Search, which acts as a shortcut to the same feature. At the tap of a button, you can find out who's singing that catchy tune. Anyways, those are all the power user features that I want to share with you. If you found this video to be useful in any way, a thumbs up would be a great way to help the channel. Also, why not get subscribed with the notification bell turned on? We'll be releasing content on the new Galaxy S20 Ultra soon, so if you don't want to miss out on that, please get subscribed. Lastly, if you guys know any other hidden features within the Android interface, feel free to just share them within the comments section. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.